I just saw a video from hand tool guru Paul Sellers about how he thinks that the number four is among the most versatile planes in his shop. And I agree with pretty much everything he says, which isn't a surprise because Paul speaks from a lifetime of experience using hand tools and decades teaching hand tools to woodworkers. But I think I can add to the conversation by speaking to the needs of today's hybrid woodworkers, folks who are unlikely to hand plane for a task that a power tool can do, but would still benefit greatly from one or two planes that might complement their power tool process. And from that perspective, I don't think that the number four is the first plane the average power tool woodworker should buy, nor do I think it's the plane they might find most useful. I think these two planes are the most valuable to the modern workshop, a block plane and a five and a half bench plane. The block plane's value is obvious. It's used for trimming, for cleaning up joinery even if it's been cut by power tools, for leveling edges that don't quite line up and for chamfering edges. It may even be used for smoothing small surfaces to save yourself some sanding. Traditionally, the number four was considered the go-to smoother and its relatively compact size compared to other bench planes makes it possible to use the number four for some of those tasks that I assigned to the block plane. But while the number four can do some of those tasks, I don't think it's the best tool for the job. I understand the desire to get more from a single tool so as to save money, but I argue that if you can only own a single plane, it should probably be a block plane, not a number four smoother. Because if you're primarily a power tool woodworker, you aren't doing much smoothing anyway. You're far more likely to sand your large surfaces. So buy the best block plane you can afford and use it for the jobs it excels at, rather than buying a smoother and then forcing it to serve as a block plane. Again, this isn't a disagreement with sellers. Paul is speaking to a hand tool audience which does have the need for a number four smoother. I'm speaking to a power tool audience that is far less likely to plane large surfaces that they can sand. By the way, you can buy used planes online. I've bought lots of them. There are right now about 3,000 listings for block planes on eBay. And you may get a great deal if you're willing to do some restoration and some tuning. But especially if you're new to hand planes, I just recommend to go buy yourself a premium block plane, even if it means saving up a little bit longer, because it's going to work well right out of the box. One bad experience with an old improperly restored or set up plane may turn you off hand planes forever, while one good experience with a quality plane that you know is tuned and working right can open up an entire world to you. So that's what I recommend. And any of the premium brands are great planes. I'm using Wood River, I like these because I think they're the best value for the quality by far. Now, if a block plane is the best tool for small tasks, what about other hand planing tasks that a power tool woodworker may encounter? Is the number four the right plane for those? I don't believe so. In fact, despite conventional wisdom, I don't even think the number five jack plane is necessarily the best choice as your second hand plane. This is the five and a half. As you can see, it's significantly larger than the number four. I was converted to this plane by Rob Cosman a few years ago because it just is surprisingly versatile, particularly for woodworkers who do not have the budget or the need for a large collection of hand planes. In particular, the number five and a half has a longer available surface between the mouth and the toe, much longer than the number four, and even longer than the number five jack plane. This gives me a sort of runway to line up on top of my workpiece, squaring my plane and helping me to keep it flat as I'm entering the cut. That helps solve many of the problems encountered by casual plane users who have difficulty keeping their edges straight and square as they start, even with a block plane. The wider iron does make quick work of smoothing project parts if you do wish to reduce your sanding, but here's where it really excels. How many times have you tried to edge glue boards to make a panel and found these little gaps even after running the edges over a power joiner or a table saw with a good blade? 
These are machine marks. They're ripples left by the curve in the jointer head or blade marks left by your saw blade. A number five and a half is the perfect complement to these power tools because it's just long enough to joint the edges of your boards, touching them up with a pass or two. Not replacing your power tools, but just cleaning up those blade marks. The number five and a half is also an excellent shooting board plane. If you're a power tool woodworker who doesn't know what a shooting board can do for you, you owe it to yourself to learn because a shooting board isn't just a hand tool woodworker's device. They excel at tuning joinery, such as trimming miters or correcting small misalignments in the angle or precisely trimming a project part shorter so it fits just right in its place. You can use the number four on a shooting board, but the wider iron of the five and a half can trim thicker stock. And its longer length and higher side also make it more stable and easier to keep square to the workpiece during use. I also think the extra heft of the five and a half adds momentum, which makes it easier to push through a cut. On the other hand, that extra weight can wear you out a bit quicker than the lighter number four if you are going to be smoothing a lot of surfaces. But as I said, most modern woodworkers sand large surfaces and have little use for a dedicated smoother. What they do need are one or two versatile planes that complement their power tools. A block plane that cleans up after power tool joinery and covers many of the other small jobs every type of woodworker does and a five and a half bench plane to quickly remove tool marks left by your power tools on your surfaces and edges and to fine tune your project parts in conjunction with the shooting board. These aren't the only two planes that I recommend, but they are perhaps the first ones you should buy if you have a primarily power tool workshop. Let me know what you think in the comments below. See you next time. This is a Koenigsegg, Sweden's finest sports car. This is a Joburgs, Sweden's finest workbench. There are things for people who appreciate quality and high performance, something they can pass down to their grandkids' grandkids. You can't afford this, but this will cost you less than a good cabinet saw. Check out what Joburgs has to offer at the link below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.